Hello, I'm Sam DeVos. I'm a musician artist who normally makes music with my main project for greater good, which is a dark ambient band with loads of experimental stuff. When Jean-Marc asked me if I would do Where the Wild Roses Grow together with Sophie of Dark Bone, I was very excited at the challenge. Lyrically and timing-wise, it's very difficult to get into a state like Nick Cave does. He's some kind of freaked out romantic. And getting into the mindset of the lyrics Nick Cave wrote for the song Where the Wild Roses Grow is not that easy, because he goes really, really crazy on that one. Smashing a girl's head in with a stone, throwing her into the wild roses and stuff like that. So, I just had to go... Uh, I just had to go crazy, you know? Like, like, really get in there, put the mindset, try to kill her, do that! Well, I think it means uh, the green girl, or the lady in green, green sleeves, or, you know, the green lady, I don't know. Uh, it's gotta be one of those. I don't speak French, but it's uh, gotta mean that. Sounds very mysterious, she looks very mysterious on the sleeve. Very, uh, Elegant, as they say. So yeah, I'm Jay Aston, and, uh, and I was asked to do it by Jean-Marc Lieberman, and uh, he wanted me to sing with uh, Julianne Fagan, which is someone I'd met quite a long time ago, but never sang with. So it was um, wonderful to sing uh, such a, one of my favourite songs uh, of all time from the Rolling Stones, of course, Sticky Fingers from Red Harlem, and to sing this, you know, with those guys. It's amazing, because we never recorded together way back when we first met. And so it was wonderful for me. So that's what we would have sounded like probably, which is pretty amazing. Uh, what am I up to now? I am in the middle of recording an album called, I think it's called Wine Waits for No One. And, um, it's me and Peter Rizzo, and he's playing most of the instruments, I think, some guitar. And of course, I'm singing. Wild Roses Grow tells a tragic story of a fatal love affair, and it explores also the mind of a killer. So it's a very interesting. Uh, story and also very dark and very romantic and it's totally my thing. Me and Mrs. Jones is also a song about the tragedy of romance. I get to sing now um, the song from a female perspective this time, uh, which makes it a bit kinky. I always like Enjoy the Silence by Deepish Mode because I just think it's a very romantic song and when it's played at the party I always dance to it. Of course it wasn't easy to make a cover of such a good song but I thought it would be a really interesting idea to make a really feminine version of it. You've caught me on a bad hair day. I can only apologise for that. But here I am to talk about my involvement in the La Femme Verte album, which I'm very proud of. Specs back on, age is a terrible thing. Okay, Moonlight Mile. That was great doing that because um, myself, Jean Marc, and Jay Aston, we were all in Jean of Jezebel together in the very early 80s and um, long overdue that we did something really but then it's all about timing it wasn't right at the time and I think we've all gone off and done our thing and brought back whatever we've learned or experienced or whatever to it um, so I don't think it would have been a very good version all the way back then so uh, I love that song I'm not the biggest Rolling Stones fan in the world I would never pretend to be but um, I prefer the more ballady side. And I think Jay does a fantastic version. Yeah, yeah, I can't see anything without my glasses on. Right, okay. Hurt. I think it's getting. Why do people in bands always wear their coats indoors? There. Hurt. Well, I was scared to do this because it's a real sacred carver song because. You know, how do you, you don't try and do a better version than the person that wrote it. You don't try and do a better version than Trent Reznor, and you don't try and do a better version than Johnny Cash, because you can't. So you just do your own version. I put my 
heart and soul into every every piece of the lyric and uh, it's a lyric that I don't know I, d I don't think you can fail to be moved by it whoever sings it it's just one of the most tragic poignant and beautiful songs I've ever heard in my life I can't say anything more than that really being boring by the Pet Shop Boys. Um, looking closely at the lyrics, it really puts me in mind of again the early 80s when um, me and Jean Marc were hanging about with Jean Love Jezebel in London. And that's how we were living our lives. We were never being boring. Every day was an adventure. The whole world stretched in front of us, our lives stretched in front of us. We could do anything we wanted to do. We were going to be the best band in the world. We were going to be. Famous and rich being boring. No, we were never being boring. We never thought it would come to an end. It hasn't quite come to an end. Life gets more muted as you get older and you look back on your spontaneity and your fearlessness and your hope. Still got quite a bit of that left, but um, not in the doses I had it in the olden days. I'd like to think that Jean-Marc and I have managed to give it a bit of a 60s twist. Don't know if that's appropriate or not, it's just what we fancy doing and it's the way I fancied singing it. I'd like to think that um, the Pet Shop Boys approved. You can only hope, can't you? Falling, originally sung by Julie Cruz from the uh, soundtrack to the film and the TV series of um, Twin Peaks. I kind of fancied camping it up a little bit with this and Jean-Marc was up for it. So, um, again, it had a bit of a 60s lounge feeling. Well, that, one of the reasons why it was sung partially in French, because my French isn't great, so hopefully it will sound cute. Yeah. So, we camped it up a little bit, hopefully staying on the right side of kitsch. So there's the French vocal, half French vocal, and there's, um, oh yeah, we put a bit of um, waka 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 kind of 70s porn movie guitar in there. Um, you know, like 70s cop shows where there is a funky guitar. I'm going to be embarrassed that I went funky guitar when I look back at this. Finally, Monday Monday. Um, always love the mamas and papas, bit of a 60s child. Well, very much a 60s child. Jean-Marc suggested a singer called Bertrand Bougala. Um I basically just did all the backing vocals on this and there's an awful lot of them. Those mums and papas were very clever with their vocal arrangements, that's no surprise to anybody. Um, Jean-Marc did this Spectre-esque thing in the background, the track. Um, it's very, very inspiring, exciting and it was fun. Bertrand came in and sang the vocal, cute way, I'm sorry, we English, sorry, we British, sorry, I'm half Irish. We're very patronising about people speaking our language. Oh God, I did the quote marks. Fuck! We're very patronising about people speaking our language. You know, we think it's cute, but it is cute. I'm sorry Bertrand, it's cute. I'm happy to lend my vocals, my backing vocals to him, like a, a warm, and comforting scarf around the vocal. Bonjour, je m'appelle Bertrand Burgala. Je connais Jean-Marc Ederman depuis 25 ans, depuis les disques de Kilontana et des Weathermen. Jean-Marc est un pionnier qui a fait de la musique électronique et plus précisément de la pop digitale avant que Jean existe. Donc c'est assez amusant de s'attaquer avec Julian à des merveilles organiques comme le répertoire des Mamas and Papas. Euh, J'ai l'impression que mon accent en français est plus prononcé quand je chante en anglais que quand je parle. Donc bon, euh, voilà, au moins je ne me serais pas mis en, trop en compétition avec Michel Phillips euh, ou Mama Cass. Hi, this is Vincent Liben and I sing on Perfect Day. Well, I think it is one of my favorite songs of all time because um, it is so well written that you directly see yourself um, with uh, someone you, you really love, uh, can be a friend or a, a son, a woman. I love it because uh, it is uh, melancholic. Yeah.
It may not sound like it, but in fact, uh, Small Distortion is a very punkish record. It has the do-it-yourself attitude totally tacked to it. Uh, we didn't care about radio formats, how showbiz will react to it, and how even people will react to it. We just wanted to cover these songs in very unusual ways and have fun doing it and crafting every element we could come up with and just making this a great record we would listen to you know, on vinyl at 3 o'clock in the morning. The funny thing about Moonlight Mile is that I only heard the original after I made our track. I started out with a MIDI file and just changed everything and made new sounds and new instruments here and there and basically just gave it to Jay and Julian and they did brilliant with it. I really like Nine Inch Nails, uh, but the funny thing is I came across this song from the uh, Johnny Cash version, like many people. Uh, what is amazing about this song is that Johnny Cash really took it to a level which is legendary now. And he kind of clothed himself around the songs and it's like an artistic goodbye for him and it's extremely emotional. We wanted to give it a different feel though, something quieter, calmer, more feminine also. Everything is really modified in this song, in fact the chorus isn't the chorus anymore. This encapsulates so much the 80s for me too. You know, all the youthful energy, the dreams, the hope, the certitude. We give it a real 60s feel. It's a bit like Nino Rota had done his version. This is the Chine Chita remix, in fact. We were never being boring. We dressed up in thoughts and thoughts make amends. We were never holding. Cave has an immaculate career. He can be a vicious rocker and aggressive bluesman, but he can also be suave and romantic and caring. Well, here he's a son of a bitch anyway. You know, there's a distinct use of male instruments for Sam and female instruments for Sophie and male vicious male dark moments. So, you know, it's very thought about. We got an email from Angelo Badalamenti. Um, saying he really likes what we did with this song, so that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, here we used elements that theoretically counterbalance each other, like 70s waka waka funk guitar against layers of strange strings and French surrealistic words. And I really love how Julian takes it to another level. It really is a scary song at the base, but she made it a really love theme for old 70s funk guitar lovers. <laughs> Your coffee, sir. Thanks, beautiful. You're welcome. How can such a pretty wife make such bad coffee? This is just an example of how the personality or the gender of singer can take the song to somewhere else. Uh, Sophie sings this and immediately gives it a new feel and sense. I mean, homosexuality in a black soul songs from the 70s, that's radical. Which Italian man is a total UFO of a song? Um, there's a funny early craft of feel in the ending, and uh, it's a real song. We hope this helped you to grab some more on what we wanted to do with small distortions. All these emotions like tears, anger, redemption, hopes, love, love.